It looks like we have another new update from Paizo about the remaster project. And this one, although it's kind of couched in an ancestry thing, it seems to be more about how they are going to handle the removal of alignments and more into the edicts and anathema type process. So my name is Don. I'm trying to be the Sly Strategist. And let's go ahead and get into it. So in this particular update, they've basically taken the dwarf ancestry and they've kind of showed us how they're going to change the old alignments and religion section and change it into a belief section in the new core rule book. They haven't really changed too much in most of the text. It kind of reads almost exactly the same between both. But one thing they have done is opposed to saying that the typical dwarf is either lawful good or lawful neutral. They have broken it down into popular edicts and popular ananthemas. The popular edict is now create art with beauty and utility, which refers to crafting. I've seen a little bit of discourse about it, about how it might sound more elven than otherwise, but this would probably be through stone craft and weapon craft and the normal crafting you think of when you think of doors. Hunt the enemies of your people. Once again, I've seen some discussion about this. It'll be interesting when they bring other player races in to see how they handle this. You wouldn't want, say, historically bad for doors orcs. If that, as a playable race, it can be complicated. And we'll see how it's handled once the new core rulebook comes out. And the other edict they have here is to keep your clan dagger close. So the clan dagger is definitely a big part of it. As you know, if you've ever played a dwarf before, popular ananthemas are to leave an activity or promise uncompleted, so completionists, and to forsake your family. These are things that are considered horrible if you're a dwarf and are going to make good role-playing triggers, I think, if you've seen my videos. I'm kind of, I'm big on the role-play more than the min-maxing, so I'm very interested to see how this works. Some of the things haven't really changed. They still talk about Torag, the god of dwarven kind, is the primary deity, and the worship of Torag's family members is also common, so that hasn't really changed. And something else they've shown us is a new feat. This would be a reaction called Stonewall. Feat level 17, dwarf, earth, and polymorph traits, and the frequency is once per day. The trigger of this reaction is an enemy or hazards effect hits you or you fail a fortitude save against one. And what this is, is basically the strength of the stone from your ancestry overcomes you so strongly that it replaces your flesh and bones with stone. You become petrified until the end of your current turn, but you don't take any damage from the triggering effect as long as it cannot overcome stone. So if it doesn't affect stone, it's not going to affect you. However, you will forfeit your turn if you use this because you are basically petrifying yourself. Super interesting, super on target for doors. I do like that one quite a bit. So going over how they're going to bring alignment into the core rule book with the edicts and anathemas, I think it helps us to understand a little bit better on what they're trying to do and what's going to happen. It is going to be interesting to me to see how they say it affects your character when you fail these things. What if you do forsake your family? How does that affect you as a dwarf? How does it affect your character? Does it actually change statistics? Does it change the power of some of your heritage feats? So Something to think about and something interesting. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to like, subscribe, or hit that notification bell for more stuff coming out. And there will be with PaizoCon starting just tomorrow. So I'm really interested, especially on that keynote. And whatever you do, I hope you have a great day today and happy adventuring. Thanks.